of an extremely brutal ruler. We do even at 800,000 people came to power, and then we have to invade the East Timor, another 200,000 people, and probably about 200,000 people in prison in the late 60s, early 70s, without trial, you know, extensive use of torture and so on. So that's one aspect. The other aspect, of course, is that he was pretty corrupt. As a family, also his family was was extremely corrupt, uh, and that had an effect on East, on, on Indonesia's economic development. And but on the other hand, you know, in in the 70s, you know, there was a period of strong economic development, and he has he has to be credited for that. But you could say that he brought that, but at an incredible price, if you want to compare, if you want to couple the two things together. He followed Sukarno. Um, was he better or worse? Uh, I think it's difficult to say because Sukarno is very flamboyant, you know, but ruled like, clearly in favour of some groups rather than others in the country. Uh, a lot of conflict during the period, and uh, and, and Suharto came in uh, as an army general and incredibly brutal in the way in which he repressed the opposition, not just communists but many others. Uh, and in that sense, I guess you could say that he brought, you know, he reduced the level of conflict. But it is again, like I say, at that unbelievable cost. And also, he's never been, he's never been meaningfully brought to trial for what he did, his corruption has never been really addressed, and I hope that, you know, in, now that he's gone, pe there can be some sort of, you know, people can have, uh, can have some sort of justices in this area, that, you know, that these things can be recognized and discussed more openly, and that there can be uh, a real recognition of some of the awful things that happened under his regime, and there can be some justice for people who suffered from it. Maybe now that can be discussed more fully, which would be very good for Indonesia. Your speciality is, is Timur. Um, that that was an example of what he was prepared to do. But what was at the back of it? Was it an, ex an expansion of Indonesia as an empire? Was it economic primarily? I think I think that I think that they um, you know they 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 wrongly saw East Timor as a threat. They thought that they could uh, complete the Indonesian Republic. It was something which Suharto thought he could just get away with, and the international community would not bother about. He thought there wouldn't be any resistance to it, and he made a massive cal miscalculation because it brought. Uh, terrible, uh, you know, international problems for him in those years, and, and eventually, you know, East Timor defeated Indonesia, a small country defeating a huge nation like that, which was really bad for Suharto. So that was a major miscalculation. And also, in his later years, he didn't recognise that, you know, people were very much aware of his corruption. He just thought he could. There was the arrogance of power. He could just steamroll everybody, and nobody would object. Well, in the end, they did, and he was overthrown. And East Timor was part of that, but. We still have to return to that period because people really in Indonesia still want justice for the crimes of the Suharto period, and I hope now that that can come out and be fully discussed, and and that, as I say, Indonesia will benefit from that undoubtedly. Professor Taylor, we're grateful to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Let's have a look at the headlines now at 18 minutes.